Hello everyone, it's Dr. Ryan coming to you from my office again with another step one question review. For today's video, what I've done is taken one of the trickier cardiovascular physiology questions from the Boards and Beyond QBank, and we're gonna go through that now. So let's get started. So the question says, a 25 year old man presents with nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Blood pressure is 100 over 70 and pulse is 110 per minute. One liter of isotonic saline is infused intravenously. Which of the following effects will the infusion have on left ventricular preload and total peripheral resistance? And here we've got a table with about eight or so options for preload and TPR showing increase, decrease, or no change. So the first step to answering this problem is recognizing that they're describing a man who has volume depletion. He has a reason for volume depletion. He's been vomiting and having diarrhea, so he could have lost lots of fluid volume from the body. They also tell you that his blood pressure is on the low side at 100 over 70 and he's tachycardic. So this man is volume depleted and that's the first step to answering this question is to recognize that. The second step is to know what happens when the body becomes volume depleted for any reason. Okay, so let's talk about what happens when a person becomes volume depleted. This could be through any mechanism. It could be through vomiting and diarrhea like in the question stem. It could be through hemorrhage. It could be through sweating on a hot day. But for any reason, if a person becomes volume depleted, that will decrease the venous return to the right ventricle. Basically, there's less total blood volume, so less venous return to the heart. When the venous return falls, that's gonna decrease the preload to the left ventricle because all that venous blood coming back to the heart is what becomes the preload to the left ventricle. And as you may know, the preload is one of the four determinants of cardiac output. So when preload falls, the cardiac output will fall. The other three determinants are heart rate, contractility, and afterload. When the cardiac output falls, that's going to lead to a fall in blood pressure because remember, your blood pressure is determined by two things. One is the cardiac output, the other is the total peripheral resistance. And so when the cardiac output falls from a patient losing blood volume, that leads to a fall in blood pressure. This fall in blood pressure is then gonna activate two physiologic symptoms that respond to low blood pressure. One is the sympathetic nervous system, the other is the RAS, the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. The sympathetic nervous system reacts more quickly, the RAS reacts more slowly. The RAS is more important in patients who have chronically low cardiac output like heart failure patients. The sympathetic nervous system is more important acutely when patients lose volume like the man in our question who has vomiting and diarrhea. So basically both these systems are gonna be activated by the volume loss. And so what are they gonna do? Well, the main thing that's gonna happen is gonna come from the sympathetic nervous system. It's gonna first of all raise the heart rate. Okay, and we saw in our question stem that our patient was tachycardic. That's because his sympathetic nervous system is active. The sympathetic nervous system is also going to increase contractility of the left ventricle to try and raise the cardiac output. The sympathetic nervous system is also going to vasoconstrict the veins of the body. This is going to push blood volume out of the venous system and into the left ventricle. That's gonna raise the preload. So your veins store a lot of extra blood volume and when you need it in times like volume depletion, the veins constrict and push that blood volume back to the heart. And then finally, the sympathetic nervous system is going to cause vasoconstriction of arterioles. That's going to raise the total peripheral resistance. And since total peripheral resistance is one of the contributors to blood pressure, the idea here is to try and raise the blood pressure. So all these things are going to be triggered by the sympathetic nervous system responding to the low blood pressure. And that's what's happening to our patient when he initially presents. So back to our question. Now that we recognize that he's volume depleted and we understand what's happening physiologically because he's volume depleted, we have to read the rest of the question. It says that they give him one liter of isotonic saline intravenously. And they want to know what's going to happen when they do that. Well, let's think this through. The question stated that a liter of normal saline was administered intravenously. If you think about that, that means the volume in the venous system of the body is going to go up. And that's going to increase the venous return to the heart. So when the venous return goes up, that's going to lead to more blood volume filling the left ventricle. And that represents a rise in preload. And this is part of the question they wanted us to answer. What is the effect of the normal saline on preload? It goes up. When the preload goes up, because preload is one of the four determinants of cardiac output, that's going to raise the cardiac output. And when the cardiac output starts to go up, that in turn is going to increase the blood pressure. And then when the blood pressure goes up, that in turn is going to decrease the activity of the sympathetic nervous system. This is basically the opposite of what we talked about before with volume depletion. In this case, we're raising the venous return by giving volume that's raising the blood pressure and dialing down the sympathetic nervous system. 
So the second part of the question says, what happens to total peripheral resistance? And to answer that, you just have to know what happens when there's a decrease in activity of the sympathetic nervous system. And it's going to be a reverse of all the things that we talked about happening in volume depletion. In this case, with less sympathetic activity, we're going to have relative vasodilation of the arterioles. In other words, the sympathetic nervous system is going to stop clamping down on those arterioles like it was when the man was volume depleted, and it's going to allow them to relax. So we're going to get peripheral vasodilation, and that represents a fall in the total peripheral resistance. And so this is the second part of the question they want us to answer. What happens to TPR after we give a unit of saline? It goes down. Now, that may seem counterintuitive to some of you for the TPR to be falling when the man has low blood pressure, but I guarantee you that's what happens when you infuse normal saline into the body, and it's by this mechanism that I've shown on the slide here. And then all those other effects we talked about earlier of the sympathetic nervous system, effects on heart rate, effects on left ventricular contractility, all those things are also going to reverse because you have less sympathetic activity. So back to our question, they asked what happens to the preload when a liter of normal saline is administered and we decided it is increased. What happens to TPR? It is decreased because the preload is going up, the cardiac output is going up, therefore there's less sympathetic activity and the TPR falls. So this is a tricky question because it requires you to not only recognize the initial state of volume depletion, but also recognize what happens when you reverse that volume depletion by giving saline. But the cool thing about this type of question is once you understand it, you can answer dozens of different questions without memorizing. So if you understand that preload goes up when normal saline is administered, you could answer lots of questions about what happens next. In this case, they want to know what happens to the TPR, but they could ask you what happens to the heart rate. They could ask you what happens to other things related to the sympathetic nervous system. As long as you understand that basic principle that the leader of normal saline is raising the preload and raising the cardiac output, there's lots and lots of questions on step one that you can answer. So what are the takeaway points from this question? Well, the first one I would say is to understand the physiology of volume depletion. That is super high yield. Volume depletion through any mechanism, whether it's hemorrhage or sweating or vomiting and diarrhea, all leads to the same physiology, and you need to lock that down before your step one exam. The second takeaway is to understand that infusing fluids intravenously, whether it's saline or blood, is going to increase the venous return to the heart and raise the preload and cardiac output. You need to know that, and once you do, you can answer lots of different questions about what happens physiologically when fluids are transfused into the body intravenously. And that concludes our video on a step one question review.